Hello everyone and welcome to the first technical overview of Black Square's TBM850. Today we're going to be looking at Black Square's unique failure system brought over from the Steam Gauge Overhaul fleet. The failure system settings are always accessible via the last two pages of the weather radar display, regardless of the aircraft's power state or any system failures, meaning that you can always adjust the settings before you've even begun your flight. On the first page we can see engine condition, which is saved between flights. Almost every engine parameter has an influence on engine condition, meaning that you'll have to monitor performance carefully to make sure that you keep it in good condition throughout your flight. As engine condition degrades, so too does performance, all the way to failure. And you may begin to see some signs of incipient engine failure on the enunciator panel, such as a chip detect light. The enunciator panel in any aircraft is essential for detecting system malfunction, but the one in the TBM850 deserves specific mention because each indicator lamp is fed by two independent circuits, which can be tested individually with the three position switch on the enunciator panel. These kind of aircraft design features will become important to you as you learn to work with a failure system as robust as the one in this aircraft. Also from this page, we can reset the engine condition, refill the emergency oxygen cylinder, or reset all failures. On the second page, we choose which failures we'd like to see and when we'd like to see them. By default, the failure system is in mean time between failure mode, a parameter used by aircraft designers and regulators to assess the approximate lifespan of an aircraft component. From the detailed settings page, we can adjust the mean time between failure of each component and that'll be saved for your next flight. If we'd like to see a failure less often, we increase the number. More often, decrease the number, or set it to off if you don't want that failure to impact your flight at all. My favorite feature of Black Square's failure system is the way that different failures are initiated. For instance, electrical system failures are usually indicated by a popped circuit breaker due to the buildup of heat at the breaker from an increased resistance or short in the circuit. This means, just like in real life, a failure may be initiated on your previous flight, be saved, and go unnoticed until your next one. For example, if your previous flight was during the daytime, you may not have used your taxi light. So this failure will not be indicated until your pre-flight inspection on the next flight. When you turn on the light, current flows through the circuit, heat builds up, and only then does the circuit breaker blow. You can try to reset the circuit breaker, but heat will build up again quickly, opening the circuit. This gives real purpose to your pre-flight and run-up checklists to ensure that all systems are working properly up until the moment of takeoff. Back on the main page, we can adjust the global failure rate from no failures to one times real time. 16 times is a good number if you'd like to experience some minor system failures to keep you on your toes. 128 if you'd like to see failures that a pilot may only experience a few times during their career. Or 1024 if you'd like to be bombarded by failures on your next flight. We can also change the failures to scheduled mode, which will retain all existing failures, but allow us to set a time window for the next failures. This can be useful if you'd like to experience an engine failure after takeoff, but don't want to know exactly when on your climb out it's going to happen. Something I haven't mentioned before is the color coding on these pages. Magenta is for catastrophic power plant failures. Red is for major system failures, such as a primary generator or a leak in a fuel tank. White is for power distribution failures. And cyan is for individually circuit breaker protected electrical failures, which comprise the majority of the 100 failures for you to experience in this aircraft. Back on the main page, we can also see all active failures and reset individual ones during the flight. The latest feature added to Black Square's failure system is an HTML interface, 
allowing you to toggle the individual failures via an external piece of software or instructor station. All you have to do is copy the exact name of the failure as it appears in the manual, add BKSQ underscore failure to the beginning, and send that HTML command to the flight simulator. Now let's go for a quick flight in the TBM 850 to experience some of the new types of failures this aircraft has to offer. One of the most exciting new failure features in this aircraft is the dynamically calculated FOD or foreign object debris damage based on the type of surface that you're operating on, the outside conditions, and the engine parameters. This will encourage the proper use of the inertial separator vanes, which reconfigure airflow in the engine air intake to expel debris picked up from the ground. The TBM 850's manual in particular recommends the use of the inertial separator for all ground operations except normal takeoff. Let's turn on the inertial separator and use it to demonstrate one of those electrical failures that we were just talking about. As you can see, we already have an inertial separator failure queued up, but the circuit breaker is not out. Let's turn on power to the aircraft and then turn on the inertial separator. We can hear the electric actuator moving the vanes until we don't anymore. The circuit breaker has popped out, leaving the vanes only partially deployed. We'll get half the benefits, but also half the detriment to performance. Now I'll start up the aircraft and see you out on the taxiway to show you some more failure features. One of the systems worth checking during the run-up is the propeller governor, which is normally tested by pressing the prop O-speed test button above the flap control. But now we have a new propeller governor failure. As we bring the power lever forward for takeoff, we'll see that the prop RPM is unable to maintain the required 2000 for takeoff. In fact, it falls much short of that number. And the propeller overspeed test button has no effect. If we press reset selected failure, we'll see the prop RPM come up to the required 2000. And then if we reduce the power lever a little, and then press the prop overspeed test button, we'll see that the governor is able to maintain a lower RPM, properly limiting the propeller. That clicking sound, by the way, is the automatic fuel selector valve, which automatically changes tanks every 75 seconds on the ground. You can also see the vertical speed needle wandering around in the slipstream of the propeller, just one of the many physics-based needles in this aircraft. After takeoff, we'll take a look at two more turbine engine specific failures. Now that we're on climb out and safely away from the airport, we can engage 850 mode, which is the removal of a torque limiter required for takeoff. It allows us to advance the power lever forward and access torque above 100% for climb and cruise. However, you can see that advancing the power lever is not increasing torque. In fact, it's having no effect on the engine at all. And that's because if we look at the failure screen, we have a fuel control failure. The fuel controller in a PT6 engine is a clockwork-like mechanical system that meters fuel flow into the engine. And luckily, it has a manual override in case of emergencies, which allows us to take control of the engine to have a safer and more convenient landing. Though be aware that full power may not be available to you when using the manual override. We're now in cruise flight and about to experience another turbine engine failure, this one called compressor stall or surging. It occurs when a significantly large obstruction to airflow enters the engine and causes the compressor RPM to fluctuate wildly. We should reduce the power setting immediately and as much as possible to decrease the severity of the surging and begin a descent to a nearby airport, keeping in mind that the engine may no longer be able to sustain combustion at different altitudes and attitudes. For our last failure today, we'll look at a manual landing gear extension. If you ever need reference for these various failures, check the 55 normal and abnormal checklists included in this aircraft. 
we'll select manual landing gear extension, airspeed under 178 knots, landing gear circuit breaker, pull off, landing gear control, down. We can hear the motor does not run, the gear does not go down. Floor panel, open. Bypass selector, pull that full on position, pump the handle 65 times. Nobody said this was supposed to be fun while circling the airport, but somebody's got to do it. And eventually, we'll get three green indications on the panel. We can check with the check down light. And that's it for a manual landing gear extension. We can proceed to the airport with caution. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the failure systems in Black Square's TBM 850. And you're looking forward to having some of your own aviation misadventures with it soon. Check in next time for another technical overview of the aircraft's electrical systems. Until then, I will see you in the next video.